So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new project from file uh, new project. And then we can just save this as a new Arduino controller project. And then we'll just open up the schematic editor for that project. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a spot for the Arduino Pro Micro to actually be connected to the PCB uh, in the schematic. So if we hit A to add in something, what we're going to want to add is a uh, connector row. So this is uh, basically like a row of pin headers. Here we can see a pinout of the Arduino Pro Micro. And basically that totals up to 12 per side. So we're going to look for the connection uh, one by 12 pin and we're gonna go ahead and add one of these in now this is um, just one side of it so then we'll go ahead and uh, duplicate that with command D rotate it around so it's the opposite rotation so this right here basically just represents where the board will slot into so the next step is to label each of these ports here so that we can see what it is and for that we can use the label feature in KiCad which allows you to sort of teleport one end of a wire to another location so if we press W to switch over to the wire tool then we can just go ahead and drag out some little wires here and double click to end them in open space and then we can use L to open up the label tool and then we'll just label this uh, D0 Then click again for this one it was D1 Okay, so this is our Arduino Pro Micro, and that's effectively where we'll slot it in. So the next step is to go ahead and add in all of the other components. So there's going to be uh, two joysticks, the 10 buttons on the face, and then the two buttons on the top as we discussed. So let's go ahead and get one of the buttons set up because once we do the wiring for one button, all of the other buttons are going to be basically the same. But before we do that, let's talk about how we're going to get this PCB manufactured. We're going to be using PCBWay, who are very kindly sponsoring these videos. They have a super awesome PCB service where you can upload your manufacturing files, change the PCB to a fun color like red, and have it made and delivered to you very quickly. Check out the link in the description to pick up one of these boards right from PCBWay. So the first step is A to add and then let's search for switch push. That looks promising. Yeah so here we go. We have one with two leads and then we have the uh, dual one which is one with four leads. So we can go ahead and grab this uh, dual one which is with four leads. If we go ahead and add that that is our switch so then what we're going to do is um, we want to add if we add some wires here we want to add a wire um, connecting these two pins and then another one going out like this and then we'll be able to add a label here if we press L we can add a label and um, let's just say this is on D0 and add it there. So now this D0 pin is connected to here. And once we switch this over to the PCB editor, we'll have to manually route a track to go here. But uh, for now, we just get that nice magical portal effect where the electricity will teleport from the end of this to this. For the other side, we just want it to be uh, connected to ground. Um, so we can add a wire here, click here to end it, extend it outward, double click to end it in open space, and then label ground, and then add it. So basically what we'll do in the program is we will use digital write to turn D0 to high so that it's on. And then uh, whenever this is pushed down, uh, the electricity from the microcontroller will go out that way onto the ground line. So the pin will read as being off. So we want to keep in mind for deciding where D0 goes and where D1 goes and all these other ports go, where the other components are going to be physically on the board because we are going to have to actually route the tracks to get to them. So let's say this... Um, if this is going to be our board right up at the top center of the controller, then we can say that this could be our back button, which is right here to the left of the center a little bit. So it would make sense for this to be connected to maybe D2. So we can edit this and say, okay, this is going to be connected to D2. So then a wire could go down here to this switch, and then these ones can go up to the, like the... Um, buttons that are on the top here and these other ones could go over to the joystick here and the d-pad down here which is made up of four buttons but we can rename this one here so we want to leave this uh, sw2 as what it is because that's the actual uh, like designation on the pcb for assembly or whatever but this lower part that says sw push dual we can change that to be a reasonable name so in this case since this is supposed to be the back button we can just name it back button yeah then the next thing is since we do have the button up here on the top here so let's go ahead and add those all right so then if we just duplicate this with command or control D then we can move it up here and have this be either the uh, left button or the left trigger and we can actually duplicate it again to make the other one and then we'll just edit one of these to be left 
button edit the other one um, to be the left trick so then if we imagine these wires coming over here we could have d1 go down and come up here and then d0 could go over the top and go down there so this could be labeled uh, d1 and this could be labeled d0 and now we can make the d-pad down here which is just four buttons um, so if we duplicate that we can put one here one here one here and one down here so we have some more we already used d0 d1 and d2 so um, d3 we have to keep in mind we don't want to connect d3 to this uh, the up arrow on the d-pad here because then how would we get to well we actually could probably go under and go there but it might be easier if we make this one be d3 then d3 can come up and over and go down here and then d4 can go under that and go right here um then same thing we probably want d5 to come down in here so we can have that be d5 and then d6 can just come down here and this can be d6 and that way we have d78 and d9 which can go over to this section for the other buttons that are going to be over there all right now this is not very centered so let's go ahead and move it over a little bit so we claim back a little more space and then since we want an arrangement with four buttons over here to be like the uh, x a y and b or for playstation people circle square triangle etc we can just duplicate these and bring them up here and okay we actually also missed renaming them down here so if we edit that then we can make this up this one can be uh right this one is down and this one is left. Okay, so now that we have those, then we can rename these using the Xbox convention. So this is A, this is B, this is X, and this will be Y. Okay, the other thing to consider is we're going to copy these two, duplicate them with Command or Control D, and then drag them over here. And then we will also need to duplicate this one so we can have another menu button duplicate that and put it right here so that's all of our buttons now now we can more easily consider which wires should go where say we connected d7 and d8 come out this side and go up and over um, that'll be d7 and then d8 right below that goes up and over to right below that one and comes down here so we could then put d9 have it come over under those two and then come down right here which could be really nice as well and then all of these wires can still go out the bottom under d9 and there's no conflict there our only issue is that these want to come across and these also want to go down but if we switch the analog ports to going here and then coming out they should be fine they can just go this side and come down d15 goes down below this one comes over d15 uh, d14 goes down comes over goes down to this one that's d14 uh, d16 can just go straight across and down to right where uh, this one is and then d10 can just go right below that down to here Okay, so now we have all of our buttons connected up. Then we want to add search for joystick and We don't see anything and the reason for that is because it is under a potentiometer dual We can just use this dual potentiometer because that's what a joystick is just two potentiometers and I'm going to name this left stick and then we can um, Just connect these to their appropriate ports So we're going to need one side to be VCC and one side to be ground uh, and the same here and then the middle on each of these will need to go to one of the analog ports so um, A3 and A2 are higher up so we're probably going to want them for this so if we press W to add a little wire out extend to the left just to make it a little nicer and then add a label let's have this be A3 and we'll figure out how to connect it when we get to the PCB part and then wire up wire over a little bit double click to end it L for a label that one will be a2 and then we just need to connect ground and power to both of these so I'm just gonna add a wire you can click to add a sort of corner so we can get around this label and not overlap with it and then I can click again to create another corner and we can add a label ground add it there wire here you can just go over and make that be ground with a label called GND and then we just need to add a, um, a VCC on each of these. So if I copy that over, rename it to VCC, and then I can add a wire here. And then we can add another wire here, click to make a corner, and then VCC. So now on each of our potentiometers of our joystick, uh, we have a VCC on one side, a ground on the other, and in between for actually reading the value of them, we have A3 and A2 for up here. We can copy this and drag it down here and this will be our right stick, um, which we will change this to A1 
and a zero. And now that is all of the input components, the two joysticks, the 10 face buttons, and the two top buttons on each side, so 14 buttons in all. Um, then if we want to add a little status LED, um, we can add an LED by add and searching for LED. We can go ahead and add one in and then so that we don't fry it by sending five volts through it we're going to want to add a resistor as well so we can add by pressing a search for r because the resistors are just called r and bring that in we can press r to rotate it so it's rotated nicely and then we can uh, go ahead and wire it up on this side to this and then from this we'll need it to go to ground and then so from this that will be a vcc so whenever the board is plugged in it'll be sending out five volts on the vcc which will go through this resistor through this led and to ground so we'll always have that led on whenever the arduino is on now that we have our schematic the next step is to turn it into a pcb in this video right here 